The country's largest meat producer declaring, quote, significant progress after a massive cyber attack. JBS was forced to shut down all of its U.S. beef plants and others in Canada and Australia. ABC's Will Carr is outside Denver, Colorado, near the company's U.S. headquarters. With more, will investigators once again suspect a Russian-based hacking group was behind this? What's the latest on how the attack happened and how the company's coming back online now? Well, Diane, the good news is that JBS is uh, planning to be back up and running uh, by the end of the day today. They were hacked on Sunday by a group that national security experts believe is based in Russia. And JBS is the largest meat producer here in the United States. They have nine facilities across the country. They also have facilities in Canada and Australia. They produce here in America 25 percent of the beef that Americans consume. And because uh, experts believe that this original Originated in Russia. Take a listen to what uh, national security expert Tom Bossert had to say. Preliminary reports suggest that it was a hacker group called Revil or ransomware evil. They sell ransomware to uh, customers essentially uh, to help those customers breach and raise money from uh, honest companies. This comes on the heels of the colonial pipeline shutdown just a couple weeks ago where the gas supply here in the United States was shut down for uh, a short amount of time. And that had a big impact on gas prices across the country. And national security experts are worried now, Diane, about what company hackers will try to target next. And Will, I know in the pipeline case, there was a ransom that was paid. Is there any word yet on whether or not the same was the case here? That's right. It's unclear at this point. It took a week or two to come out and to find out that Colonial Pipeline did pay the ransom that they were asked for. They pay more than $4 million to get their information back so they could get their systems back up and running. That's a controversial decision. Critics basically say that if you do pay these hackers, all you're doing is incentivizing them to try to hack other companies. But Colonial Pipeline said, look, this is what we needed to do to get our gas supplies back up and running and to prevent a further crisis across the country. Country, Diane. And Will, how is this JBS hacking affecting meat prices across the country? So right now, uh, meat experts, there's enough system that it's not going to have an immediate impact. Uh, there's going to be me enough meat for the next couple of weeks of summer. Beyond that, could it rate pro raise prices? They tell us there's a possibility. We'll just have to wait and see uh, to see exactly when JBS gets everything back up and running again. They're hoping that happens today. Uh, this comes as President Biden is set to meet with President Putin in Geneva in just a couple of weeks. And President Biden was just asked about this attack and just said that the, the United States is looking at retaliation at this point. Diane. All right. Well, Carr, thank you for that. Meanwhile, the White House says it is in contact with Russia's government about that cyber attack. So far, the Kremlin is not commenting, but President Biden is set to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Switzerland in just two weeks. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki spoke earlier about the administration's response. Take a listen. We're not taking options off of the table, but it's just an opportunity. There will be an opportunity for the president to discuss this directly with President Putin to reiterate uh, the fact that we believe that uh, responsible states do not harbor ransomware criminals. Uh, and that, uh, and as he said, um, as we said around uh, colonial and the colonial hack or the colonial ransomware attack, uh, we will continue to be in direct touch with Moscow. We will continue uh, to make the case that uh, responsible countries need to take take decisive action against ransomware. And I want to bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein and ABC News contributor and former assistant secretary of counterterrorism Elizabeth Newman for more on this. Thank you both for being here. Rick, I want to start with you. First of all, what do you make of Saki's response on this today? Yeah, one word that she repeated there, responsible, as in responsible states, this is what they do. That, to me, speaks pretty loudly. It's a measured response from Jen Psaki, but it's a reminder to Putin, who needs the legitimacy that summits like this confer upon him, uh, that there are responsibilities that go along with being a first-tier world leader. Uh, and as much as Putin might be wanting to rattle the cages of Americans and this new president at this new time, as much as, as, much as Russians might deny direct involvement in this, it's a reminder, uh, kind of less is more approach, that the that 
that this White House, to the chagrin of President Biden's critics, have taken so far in terms of public diplomacy. Uh, there are things that, that remain as American options, but uh, they aren't overreacting, at least not now, to anything that they're seeing from the Russians. And Rick, how do you expect President Biden to address this when he meets with Putin in two weeks? Yeah, it's so interesting because I talk about this as Putin needing this summit, but Biden needs Putin uh, also, looking at his goals around climate change, looking at his goals uh, around the Iran nuclear deal, uh, looking at the, the tensions along the Ukrainian border. There's a range of areas where Biden is looking for a new relationship, not really a reset relationship, but after the very tumultuous uh, Trump years where President Trump was roundly criticized for being too cozy with Vladimir Putin, the tougher line that Biden has taken, as he has said, he's, he told Putin directly that he doesn't think he has a soul, uh, and th that's quite a quite a moment and quite a quite a memory to, to harbor into that next meeting. I think clearly Biden is going to have to mention this directly, uh, and it's clear that the Russians are, are trying to hit Americans where they feel it in terms of these these latest attacks. Biden may be referencing uh, President George W. Bush, who said the first time he met Putin, he felt like he stared into his soul. Biden didn't find anything there. Elizabeth, let's get back to the cyber attack specifically, this most recent one against JBS. So how does that compare to the one uh, which made so much news across the country, the hack of the Colonial Pipeline, that caused those gas shortages across the Southeast? Well, certainly the impact is not as nearly as uh, significant as what happened with Colonial Pipeline. Arguably, though, the Colonial Pipeline incident um, was a lot of panic buying. That's what caused the shortages. It wasn't actually the lack of gas as much as people taking up the supply so quickly. Um, but, but you know, it, it is kind of an interesting, uh, per perhaps strategic tactic that Russia is uh, not directing, supposedly, but allowing to happen. Um, you know, ransomware attacks have been on the increase for a while. They were up 300 percent last year. Over 2,400 schools and hospitals and government agencies were targeted last year. But you didn't hear too much about them. I, I recall we heard a lot about the hospitals during COVID. That, that's kind of a big deal that our hospitals were being messed with. But this seems different, right? It's it's targeting the things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's getting back to that um, core of, of uh, what we use to function in our lives. And so they've targeted energy. They've targeted our food supply. It kind of makes you wonder what's going to be next. Um, nothing has a catastrophic effect, but it certainly is making headlines and getting the American domestic population's attention, which might be... Uh, probably a lineup to kind of get underneath Biden's skin a bit and give him some domestic problems as he goes into this uh, summit with, with Putin in a few weeks. And, and Elizabeth, I, I asked Will about this before, but in the case of the Colonial Pipeline, the company paid about $4.4 .4 million to the hackers. And that raised a lot of concerns about if, if you're setting a bad precedent. So what do we know about what happened with this JBS case? And, and what do you do if you're a company like this? Well, we often don't find out if uh, a company has paid ransom. It's usually managed by their insurance company. Um, the government takes kind of this tacit line of, we prefer for you not to, but they don't go so far as to say you can't because they know that in many cases that might be the only way for the company to survive. In this particular case, it, the uh, JBS has come out and said, our backup servers were not affected. Um, and they uh, were able to get back online relatively quickly, maybe one day of disruption. Um, so I don't know that we're going to see supply chain disruptions. I don't know that you're, the consumers are even going to notice this. Um, more of a uh, shot across the bow, if you will, as opposed to an actual uh, harmful attack. Uh, the question about whether they've actually paid the ransom, I, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll find out. Last time it took a little bit of uh, sleuthing of, of some good journalists to, to figure out that they actually had. But the, the um, studies from last year show that in most cases, they do people do pay the ransom uh, because it's just the easiest way out of the situation. And Rick, uh, we're just uh, confirming a report that has been out there that hackers have breached several computer systems at the Metropolitan Transit Authority. That's New York City's transit authority, the largest transit authority in the country. Several con computer systems were breached, operations not impacted. But here we've got this. We've got the meatpacking one. We've got the gas shortages caused by the Colonial Pipeline hack. Republicans are blaming President Biden, and, and the Democrats are saying, no, it was, it was the previous president's fault. It's pretty clear 
clear, we are vulnerable. And uh, presidents of both parties have been uh, on the job as this threat built and now is uh, up to a drumbeat. And one of the things I've heard is that one of the reasons we don't respond more forcibly against Russia and China is because we aren't as good as they are as destroying things, uh, you know, with this kind of cyber warfare. Uh, how big a strategic challenge is this for the Biden administration? Yeah, and the message is not just that we're vulnerable, but we're vulnerable in ways that most Americans never thought about. Who would have thought that uh, whether you can get a steak for your grill this summer would be contingent on whether you can get hacked or whether you can get to work in the morning? Again, where you, whether you can get gas at the local, local, your local filling station. Those are things that have become quite obvious to Americans, and that is the point. To the extent that this is a coordinated uh, effort by the Russians or other entities, it is to deliver that message directly to, to individual Americans about our vulnerability and about the power, the sway that some of these foreign actors that don't have the best interest of Americans in mind uh, can deliver. So I think all of this adds up to a pretty big moment of reckoning. Wherever the political blame lies, of course, the, the previous president uh, put in place policies that prompted reactions. Biden comes in with his own policies, and that creates the tensions that we're seeing right now. Putin and other foreign actors are still testing Biden as a new president, someone they know well, but, but they're very hesitant to, to embrace some of the policies they've seen. They know that he is, his interests are not exactly there. So the fact that Americans are feeling this, I feel like, Terry, that's exactly the point. And so, Elizabeth, what, what do you do, either from the government sector standpoint or the private sector standpoint? How do we prevent these attacks from happening in the future? Well, I, I think there's two pieces here. One, um, we have not taken Russia seriously enough in the last uh, four years. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for the Biden administration to act, not just use words. Um, it needs to be done with our partners. Um, and that, look, that cyber in some ways is, is actually one of the uh, lesser uh, wrongs that they have conducted over the last few years. They have uh, recklessly deployed a chemical nerve agent in, on foreign soil as well as against their own citizens. Um, that, that really has never been dealt with other than by a handful of sanctions and some criminal indictments that are never going to see the light of day because Russia never turns over anybody. So uh, you have that. You have their complicity in what happened in Belarus last week with bringing an airliner down to take a journalist hostage. Um, they are a bully. And bullies, the only way you stand, you uh, deal with bullies, you've got to stand up to them. So we, we need to see some action, and some of that might be out of the public eye. It might be, uh, you know, things that we never know about, but it needs to be done jointly with our partners. So that's part one. But part two is this is not going away. If it's not in Russia, these criminal gangs are going to operate elsewhere, and they're going to continue attacking because— they make money off of it. So we need to do a better job with our protection, our cyber hygiene, and making sure that our infrastructure is resilient. Um, one of the th key themes in security these days is not that we have to make sure there's never an attack, but that we can bounce back from those attacks as fast as possible. And resilience in cybersecurity in particular is very possible, but it requires investment and it requires uh, our state, local, and federal governments to actually um, draw attention, cr create the incentives for both the private sector uh, and the, the government sector to invest in the necessary cybersecurity. Our cyber hygiene. I've never heard it put that way. Thank you, Elizabeth. Rick Klein, always great to have you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.